Hi, everyone. This is Angel Your Lady Luck. Welcome once again to Reasons Now Told an audio blog by Ray Bianting. Topics discussed here are also discussed in detail at Advanced Game Foul Academy. Do you want to breed the game foul you want? And also save time and money? Oh boy you can. By minimizing hit and miss in breeding. So what are you waiting for? Enroll now. Just send message to RBS Premium and FB. Or text 0917716986060. Understand real breeding. Be a real breeder. Without understanding breeding, one will never be a true breeder. Learning a little science is not about winning all the time. It is enough you win more than you lose. But mainly it is all about producing the game foul you want. With less expense. And in shorter time. Because you are eliminating much of the trial and error. Most important, as a supposed breeder, you have to give the right answers. When people start asking the right questions. So it helps to learn what you are doing. They who are open-minded welcome something new. They who think they are already masters, do not. They are afraid to discover they might be wrong all along. Those who refuse to learn something new, are stuck with what they know, both the right and the wrong. Those who study leave behind what is wrong, and move ahead with what is right. Now here is our host. Thank you Angel. Our topic today is about specializing on and propagating just a few bloodlines. When you already have created a bloodline or bloodlines, with characteristics that you want, and more or less uniformed and stable, you may propagate these bloodlines. You may now mass produce your bloodlines, either for fighting them yourself, or for selling. Whichever, it is more advisable to concentrate on a few selected bloodlines. After all, most famous breeders are known for only a few bloodlines. They specialize on favorites. On the other hand, there are the so-called collectors, who keep so many bloodlines. More likely these collectors are not famous for any single bloodline. Specialists are better on their specialized fields than general practitioners. So chances of producing better game foul is higher, if you specialize on a few bloodlines. When you breed only a few bloodlines, your resources will allow you to produce more samples of the few bloodlines you have. For example if your resources will allow you to produce only 100 heads, then with 10 bloodlines you will only have 10 samples of each. With 2 bloodlines, you will have a sampling of 50 heads for each. The more samples you will have the more accurate your assessment of the bloodline's value will be. With less samples, your assessments are less conclusive. Your choices of materials to use to produce succeeding generations are limited. And, for those who plan to sell their game foul, it is harder for them to establish a name associated with a bloodline, because they will not have enough number of any bloodline to showcase. 100 black roosters will attract more attention than 10 each of different plumage color. Our own blacklist is an example of a successful specialized bloodline. The above are from the point of view of mathematics. In genetics there are more logical and scientific explanations to support the idea of breeding more or few rather than few of many. One of the scientific factors is genetic drift. How does genetic drift affect bloodlines? Genetic drift is the process of change in the frequency of gene variant in a given population over a period of time. And, this change is caused by chance or random events rather than by selection. So it is not the intent of the breeder. To be more exact, genetic drift is evolution due to sampling error. The frequency of the alleles that will shape the traits for the next generation have become different 
from the expected probability from the gene pool of the current generation. What will happen is the genotype of succeeding generations will be different from that of the previous generations. Wow! So it's better to have only a few bloodlines. There are practical reasons that are indeed logical. And, there are scientific reasons too. Talking of science and practice, we are inviting you to enroll with Advanced Game Fowl Academy. And learn to breed the game fowl you want. Be a real breeder. Now back to the topic. So what is the relevance of genetic drift to having few? Or many bloodlines? Of course we clearly understand that the premise is when you have few bloodlines. You can have many samples. Or individuals belonging to said few bloodlines. And, if you have many bloodlines your resources will limit you to produce. Only a few of each of your many bloodlines. So, what then? Yes the premise is that. When you maintain many bloodlines, the population of each bloodline is small. Each of the bloodlines then is at higher risk of being affected by genetic drift. Because genetic drift affects small populations more severely. Like natural selection, and selective selection, genetic drift is a mechanism of evolution. However, the three differ in the cause. Genetic drift causes evolution by random chance. Whereas natural selection causes evolution on the basis of fitness. Evolution by natural selection depends on an allele's effect. On the fitness of the population. In natural selection alleles that improve fitness. Are likely to rise in frequency. While alleles that reduce fitness will fall. In frequency. Evolution by selective mating is by design of the breeder. In selective breeding alleles of the breeder's choice will rise in frequency. On the contrary evolution by genetic drift is a random process. How does it affect populations? An example of genetic drift that will affect the gene pool of a bloodline is the bottleneck effect. For instance, a large population of a particular bloodline is hit by a calamitous disease. Resulting in a drastic decrease in their population with only few surviving individuals. The gene pool of the small, random assortment of surviving individuals is affected. The frequency of alleles in the few surviving individuals may not reflect those of the original, larger population. The gene pool in this group may be different from those of the original population. When this survivors manage to re-establish the population, the genetic composition of the new population of the same bloodline would be different from that of the old population. There is a possibility that in the new population a variant of a gene or an allele declines in terms of frequency while the other variant becomes more common. Another form of genetic drift is the founder effect. This is a more common occurrence in game fowl breeding. For example you acquired a trio of blacklists from Airbase Ugbo. This trio will be the founder of the future blacklist population in your farm. If it so happens that one of the individuals in the trio has capabilities that are less than the average of the entire blacklist population, then it is a possibility that the population of the blacklist in your farm will be less than the average of the blacklist population at Airbase Ugbo. The larger population at Airbase Ugbo will not be affected much by a few individuals that are below average, but in a single trio, a single, less than average individual can contribute much to the deterioration and performance of the future population. If this is a hen in the trio, then she could contribute her genes to about 50% of the first generation offspring. If it is the brood cock, then he contributes his genes to all of the first generation offspring. In both examples a bloodline may still carry its old name, but its characteristics might be very different. 